Hello everyone, my name is Almighty Zentako, and I'm here to do a short video on how to make a simple platform game in Click Team Fusion 2.5. Now, if you don't know what Fusion 2.5 is, it is a uh, game development software for making simple 2D games. You can't really do 3D with it. I mean, you sort of can but it requires some finagling. So mostly this is for two-dimensional games. Uh, it's actually, it's pretty powerful. You can uh, output this thing to Android or to iPhone or HTML5, as you can see right here, as well as just make a game for the PC. <clears throat> now, if you don't know what this thing is, uh, this is the next version of Multimedia Fusion 2, which is made by Click Team. You can go ahead and check out their products at www.clickteam.com. It's pretty good stuff. Uh, what I like about it is it's, it's very um, it's user friendly because it has visual scripting. You don't have to go in and actually know the syntax, so it's pretty hard to jack up your syntax and get errors that you know are just caused by the fact that you had a typo. Uh, it's all visual. It's, it's done through the use of objects, which you can download, which are called extensions, and we'll get into that later. Uh, so, <clears throat> if you've never used this product, I would suggest perhaps watching a different tutorial first, but if you know a little bit about it, we are going to get started in making a simple platform game. So, the first thing we need to do, let's go over here and make a new file. Now, this brings us up to our, excuse me, our frame editor. So, we're just going to need one frame for this game. We don't really need to name it or anything. 640 by 480 is fine. We'll double click here. Here's our frame. Now, a frame is essentially your workspace. It's, it can be a level or whatever. This is what you can see, what you can work with and, and display. Uh, if we go to the application, we can mess with properties. We're going to not mess with this right now. Everything's actually fine right now for what we're going to be doing. Uh, as you see here, we have a grid. Uh, this grid is not on by default. There's a button here you can press to turn the grid on and off. This, this shows the grid, and this will allow you to snap objects to it. Uh, and you can change the grid parameters here. 16 by 16 is fine for what we're doing, so we'll leave that as it is. We'll activate the grid and snap to grid. <clears throat> now, for a platform game, I recommend if you don't want to make your own complicated custom code, you should use the platform movement object. So we will go right click and insert object. And we're going to look through a bunch of stuff here until we can find it. Platform movement object, here it is. Now, once you drop it, uh, there is an entire list of variables here, as you see. This affects the way that our object, our player object, is going is going to function within the game. Uh, we can just leave this the way it is right now. We can mess with that later. Once you get to the point where you're ready to kind of fine tune your game mechanics, we can at any point just double click on this object again, and it'll bring that right back up. As you see, we have like max x velocity, max y, acceleration, gravity, jump strength, all this stuff. Uh, up, max step up and hold pixels. <clears throat> That's uh, that affects how how much you can if you're walking or moving your character. How much you can just jump up. Otherwise, anything higher than four pixels is going to be considered to be an obstacle. So, next thing we need is an active object. Everything in Multimedia Fusion that does stuff is pretty much an active object. You have uh, two main types here. You have an active object, and then you have backdrops, which we also are going to need a backdrop. Now a backdrop is uh, is essentially it's a piece of art that it can be interacted with, but we can't call it. We can't reference it in the event editor. We can't, uh, you know, say hey if something happens with backdrop twenty six or something. I mean, maybe you can. As far as I know, you can't. So um, <clears throat> anyway, this is all we need right here to make a simple platform game. So first things first, I absolutely hate the way. The active object looks by default, so we're going to double click on that to bring open the sprite editor. We're going to delete this. And uh, this is going to be our player. So we're just going to make him blue. And we can change this later right now. We just want something we can see at a glance and know that that's our player. Give him a little outline. Uh, here, give him some eyeballs. Wink, wink. This is just a stand in, this is really not that important. But, you know, I like to have some guy that I can just kind of tell that he's he's my player. That was my phone. I need to charge it. Okay. Yay. And we'll give him a little bit of glare on his eyeball. Look at that. Isn't he just the best? Um, give him a tongue. I'm red-green colorblind, so sometimes I, 
I completely jack up my colors. I believe this is red. Yeah, there he is. Okay, there's our dude. <clears throat> okay, we got our player. And uh, right now his name is active. Uh, we're going to change that. We're going to change that to player object. It can be anything you want, but we're going to call player object just for simplicity's sake so we know what we're looking at whenever we're in the event editor. And here is our sprite. This is going to be our just a brick or something. We're going to make it like a Mario sprite, so kind of like a Mario background. Let's go with brown. Brown's a nice color. We'll get the body of it there. We'll throw in the shadow real quick. Kind of wasted time. This really isn't that important. I just, I don't know, I like to make things look good. And uh, let's fill that in. So we'll make this light. Well, it's too light. Whatever. Texture. That looks good. Doop-a-doo, doop-a-doo. Now we need something darker. There we go. Okay. That looks like a... Uh, it's like a brick or dirt or something. Bam, we got that there. <clears throat> now there's a new function that they don't have in Multimedia Fusion 2 that they put in Click Team Fusion 2.5. It's actually something I requested like years ago, a paint mode for objects, and they put it in surprisingly. So I feel like this was put here just for me. So you click on uh, the paint tool here, the paint mode, and then you click on your object over here, and you can just paint it right on in. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Meow. Sizes are wrong. These here are by default 32 by 32 since we have a grid of 16 by 16. You know what? Let's just change our grid. We'll make the grid 32 by 32. It doesn't matter right now. I like to have a small grid size uh, and small sprite size because I really like sort of pixelated graphics, but 32 by 32 is fine. Obviously, there's going to be less um, tiles to work with, but that's okay. All right, so back to printing or painting rather. <clears throat> okay, we're painting on the ground. Let's just make this a box so that we can't fall off the screen. We're going to make this a simple one screen game. All right, maybe drop some platforms here and here. And uh, yeah, so over here for symmetry's sake. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Um, and I like to have a black background. You can, it doesn't really matter, but uh, if you go into the frame, there's an option here for background color. You can make this whatever you want. We could have like, you know, purple. I think that's purple. Like I said, I'm colorblind. We're going to make it black because it reminds me of old school computer games. <laughs> Drop our guy here. <clears throat> now, if we run the game, nothing is going to happen. Uh, and the reason nothing is happening is because we have no code yet. So what we need to do is click up here on the event editor. Now, I highly recommend that you comment your stuff quite extensively, otherwise you're gonna get confused as things grow in complexity and you know if you take maybe a, a break for a couple weeks, you're not gonna know what's happening. So I like to uh, click insert and add a comment. I like, to, uh, I like to do my comments and have them color coded depending on what they are. So for my basic comments, I have a background of blue. I set my font color to white. And you know, I like to have just a like terminal, kind of gives it a nice look, bam. And we can say, comment, boink, there's our comment. Okay, <clears throat> so first thing we want to do is insert a new event. This brings up our condition. We're going to go over here to the storyboard controls and do start of frame. Start of frame gets checked and called at the very beginning. This is the very first thing that happens. It only happens once, and after that, it's no longer cycled. So this is what you want to, uh, the event you want to call when you want to load things, whenever you need to set up your scene. So we'll do that. Start of frame. Now, the first thing we need to do is <clears throat> we have to attach the player object to the platform movement object. Otherwise, this the, uh, this little object here won't really know what to do. It won't know where its parameters, what they affect. So start a frame. We're going to click, right click on this and say set object. And we're going to pick the only object we have. Bam. So now our object, our player object here, has been attached to the platform movement object. They're now tethered. And all of these parameters are now affecting this guy. So if we run it, let's see what happens. OK, he fell. He fell down. Now the reason he fell all the way through the ground is because we have no code to talk about collisions. <clears throat> so what we want to do, go back to the other. Here, let's say load 
do another comment. We'll call this one collisions. I can't spell. I think that's right. So we want to add another event. And this event's going to say collision testing. Now every um, single object, a various object, it, it has its own code. It, it, I think they're written in C plus or Python. I'm not quite sure. So they all have their own eccentricities. You need to learn about them before you can really use it to affect. You can usually click on the object and there's a help button and it'll bring up everything you need to know about it. So if you're ever confused, you can do that. But I know from experience that we need to have for collisions, collision testing as the, on the top of event, and we want to <coughs> test for ob obstacle overlap. Okay, and then we need to say ask if our player object collisions overlaps a backdrop, and what we want to do then is set this to collisions object does overlap with an obstacle. Let's run and see what happens. Oh my God, he still fell through. Why did that happen? I can tell you why that happened. <clears throat> um, even though you can't call backdrops, you can uh, interact with them with an active object. So we have to click on our backdrop and we need to set it to an obstacle. Right now, these are not obstacles, they're just pictures. So if we click over here, yeah, there's collisions, obstacle type, none. If we make it a, we can, we can do obstacle, platform, or ladder. I actually don't know what these other two do. I think that's for built-in movements, but we will do obstacle. Now let's see, do they all have it? Yes, they're all obstacles, because this is the same. These are just copies of the same backdrop. Backdrop. So, bam. Look at that. It works. He is now sitting on the ground. So, step two. We need to move this guy. Um, a game is basically compromised of two things. You have player input, and you have feedback. So we're going to need to get some input. So. Uh, since this is a simple platform game, we'll just probably use like maybe right arrow, left arrow, and X for jump. So we're going to start a new event, right click on the keyboard, and we're going to say repeat while key is pressed. And this brings up a toggle that lets me press anything on the keyboard. So we're going to press the right key. And now we have an event that gets called. It will repeat this event as long as the right arrow is pressed. So while we're holding it down, this is going to happen. Let's copy that real quick. Paste it. We can double click on it and then press left. Now we will repeat this while left arrow is pressed on this event. So on the right arrow event, we're going to click in here. It's on user input. User is holding right input key. So what that does is while you were holding down the right arrow, the platform movement object is going to have this object, which is attached, uh, act as if the player is holding the right input key. So essentially, we've, we've assigned the right arrow to be the right input key for our player. Now we're going to do the same thing, well, the opposite thing. Uh, for this one, user is holding left input key. So let's try that out. We'll run the application. It's on the ground, and he's moving around. Look at that. He's affected by gravity and everything. He's collisions with the obstacles here. It's everything we need. So now we need a jump, because all good platform games have jumping. So jump. <clears throat> so we're going to say the keyboard. Upon pressing a key, we don't. Uh, we'll make it X. We don't want to say repeat while key is pressed because then if we hold in X, he'll just fly infinitely into the air. We don't want that to happen. So right click again on the platform movement object column and on user input, jump. Let's try that out. Press X. Okay, it's kind of a crappy jump. Now there's a problem with this at this point. If I keep pressing X, look at that, I can just keep flying. It's as if my character, you know, he has wings or something. Um, <clears throat> now, you know, this may be what you want to do if you have a game like Joust or something. you got a guy you want to fly around, he's flapping. You know, that's pretty cool. But if you want a simple platform game like we have, we don't want our guy to be able to do that. We don't want air jumping yet. So what we need to do is set some more parameters. So uh, currently, the reason that he's doing that, we need to ask, the best way I think to do this is ask uh, if you're pressing X and also... We can click on the platform of an object. There's something called object states. We're going to say, is the object standing on the ground? So, well, and you want to do it in this order. If you do it like this, object is standing on ground, this event will, will kind of get triggered. It won't trigger it, but it'll, it uses more memory because it's constantly saying, oh, this is true, object is standing on ground, and then it has to check this. 
if the first one is is not true, then you're using less, less processing power. So this is a better uh, way to go about it. So we're going to ask, <coughs> is the player pressing X and is the object standing ground? Then we're going to jump. So let's test and see if that works. Boom. Can I fly anymore? Keep tapping X. I can't fly. Okay. Now, this platform movement object also has something called jumping in air uh, or holding the jump button while in air, such as Mario, where you can just tap the button to jump short, or if you hold it in, you'll sort of, you know, do a, a longer jump. You'll have more air time. And we can do that by going to the keyboard, repeat while the key is pressed, X. And then we're going to ask about the object state, and the object state is object is jumping. So if we are holding in X while the object is jumping, then we want to go over here and say user is holding jump in the air. And uh, all that will be affected by you have jump strength and then there's jump hold strength. So changing these numbers will affect how high you jump initially, also how high you will jump while you're holding in the uh, jump button. And the gravity over here will affect gravity altogether. So if we lower that gravity, obviously we'll get more, you know, we'll get uh, more ups, but uh, we'll also fall slower and it'll be like you're on the moon or something. So let's check this out, running the application. Moving around, boom. So that's holding it in, that's tapping it. As we notice, it's not very different. So what we're gonna do is modify that a bit. Maybe change the jump hold strength to 20. Bam. Okay, see that's much better. We still can't get up there though. And I would like to be able to get up there. Let's, um, let's modify the gravity just a tad. We'll make it eight, no, that's way too low, uh, 28. Let's see how that does things. Eh. Kind of. I mean, it's getting there. Here, we'll just we'll just do this. Grab all these, drop them down by one. There we go. Okay. As you can see, we now have a complete and very simple platform game. Um, if you check in next time, I'm going to have another tutorial to sort of um, you know talk about other features we can add, such as scrolling. Uh, you know, collect, collecting power-ups and whatnot. There's a whole bunch of stuff we can do. We can make a very complicated platform game. This is the absolute basics. So hopefully that was this was educational for you. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks, guys.